Hello, today we will discuss the data structure, that is what are the different data files, what information do they contain, the correspondence between the variables in these files and the questions in the questionnaire and so on. Before I talk about the content of the data files, I want to talk about how we collect the data and what data we collect. There are two main features of the survey to keep in mind. First, this is the household survey. So information is collected about the household and then about each member of the household. But separate sets of questions are asked to those who are 16 years or older and to those who are 10 to 15 years old. Some information is also collected about 0 to 9 year olds from their parents and guardians. They are not interviewed directly. The second point to note is that this is a longitudinal survey. So information is collected repeatedly, in this case every year. Although attempt is made to interview the sample members every year, in some years they may not participate because they could not be contacted or they were busy and so on. In this picture uh, here, you can see two such cases. The top row represents a person who was interviewed every year and the bottom row shows a person who was interviewed intermittently. So because of these two features of the survey, you can see that the data is collected from different sources every year. To provide all that information in one data file will make the file too big and difficult to open using standard computers and softwares. So we provide the information collected in separate files. Data from one source is generally provided in one data file and the same structure is repeated every way. The first year of data collection is referred to as wave 1, the second year as wave 2 and so on. To make it easier to use, all files have the same root name, but a letter prefix is added to differentiate the wave. So in wave 1, file names will start with A underscore, in wave 2, B underscore and so on. So let's think about the interview process. The interviewer first collects basic biographical information about every household member. This is generally answered by the person who owns or rents the accommodation. But if that is not possible, then any adult in the household is asked. This information is stored in the file called INDALL, I-N-D-A-L-L, -L, which is called A underscore INDALL in wave 1, B underscore INDALL in wave 2, and so on. Here is an example of the type of data stored in this file. As you can see, this is the information about a four-person household where each person is uniquely identified by a variable called PIDP and the household is uniquely identified by a variable called A underscore HIDP. Each person in the household is assigned a person number called A underscore PNO. The variable A underscore sex represents the biological sex of the person and A underscore DVH, their age at the time of the interview. The interviewer then asks the person who owns or rents the accommodation some basic questions about the household, such as, such as mortgage payments, household expenditure, etc. The information collected in this household questionnaire is stored in the file called HHRESP, HHRESP. For wave 1, it is A underscore HHRESP. For wave 2, it is B underscore HHRESP and so on. This information is at the household level. So for the household we just looked at, the data will look like this. Then the interviewer will attempt to interview every person who is 16 years or above separately. And that information will be stored in the files called A underscore INDRESP, B underscore INDRESP, etc. Again, going back to the household we looked at, we know that two of them were eligible for this type of interview. If they both participated in the interview, then we will have information about them and their data in A underscore address, and it will look something like this. So we will have information, of, say, about their employment status. The interviewer offers um, a paper questionnaire to all 10 to 15 year olds in the household, but only with the consent of their parents or guardians. The young person then goes and fills out this questionnaire by themselves and puts it in an envelope, seals it and hands it back to the interviewer. In only some cases um, can they post it back. This information is stored in the files called youth. Again, the, in wave 1 it will be called A underscore youth, in wave 2 it will be B underscore youth and so on. 
for example, the household that we just looked at, um, the household there was one household member who was eligible, and the data would look something like this. Information about zero to nine year olds is collected from their parents as they are not interviewed directly. This information is stored in separate files, mostly because these are multi-level files at the level of the parent and their children, and so easier to provide in separate files. Although we said that information collected during adult interviews is stored in the in-resp files, there are some exceptions. One was the information about children, which we just discussed. Any information about events or multiple sources is also easier to provide in separate multi-level files. For example, partnership history, employment history, income and payments from different sources, etc. For the complete list of all the files and their descriptions, go to our website or just click on this link. If you click on any of the numbers, you will see all the variables in that wave specific file. As you know, before the Understanding Society survey started in 2009, there was a similar longitudinal panel survey of UK households called the British Household Panel Survey. This study started in 1991 and continued for 18 years. After that, members of the sample were included in Understanding Society. As a lot of the questions aren't the same, you can combine the BHPS and Understanding Society data. To make it easier for you, we have harmonized the data across the two surveys. BHPS data files follow a similar naming convention, but for those files, wave one file names start with BA underscore. Wave two files start with the prefix BB underscore, so on. And here on this web page, the waves are referred to as B1, B2, B3, etc. So let's click on B1 next to Indol. You will be taken to this page where you can see the list of all variables in BA underscore Indol file. As you can see, the variable names also start with BA underscore. In some cases, we put together data available in different files and provide them in one file to make it easier for users. One such file is the file called child. This includes information about household members aged 0 to 15 years. Another set of such files are the X-wave or cross-wave files. In these files, we put together data collected at different waves. One of the most useful files is the one called X-wave DAT. It includes stable or time-fixed information for each person which could have been collected at different waves for different people. For example, the ethnic group question is only asked when a person is first interviewed. And here we collect it and store it in one variable called raisel underscore dd. As this is a household survey, it is important to know how each person is related to every other person in the household. So there is a file called egoalt, which shows the relationship between any two members of the household. That is why single person households don't feature in this file. Some information is collected during the interview process. These are referred to as paradata. Here are some examples of data files which include such paradata. We also provide derived variables. These are generally uh, variables which have a underscore dv at the end of the name. There are four types of such derived variables. First, are the variables which combine information collected in different variables to make it easier to use. For example, the highest educational qualification variable. Second are the variables which are, have been checked and corrected for inconsistencies. Um, examples of such variables are sex underscore dv, age underscore dv, and so on. Third type of such variables are where there are missing values which have been imputed. An example of such a variable is the usual gross monthly pay variable, paygu underscore dv. And the fourth type of such variables is the relationship indicators, which indicate different family members. For example, the variable mnpid is the PIDP of the biological mother of the person. Here you can find a complete list of all the derived variables. Please note that in this data, missing values are assigned a specific negative value which shows why it is missing. Here is a list of those missing values. 
Before you start your analysis, you will need to set these values to missing. The data can be linked with geographical level data by making use of the different geographical indicator files that we provide. Additional data was also collected by nurses. For part of the sample, this was collected after the second wave and for the VHPS sample after the third wave. You can find more information about this if you follow this link. And finally, if you want to link individuals across the different data files, whether it is within a wave or across waves, you need to use the variable PIDP. And if you want to link households across data files within a wave, you need to use the variable HIDP with the wave prefix. But remember, there is no way to link households across waves as there is no concept of a longitudinal household.